Back at ESP2, they will reverse the process and mount the old CMG into the support structure and replace the MLI cover. The old CMG will be returned on STS-122-1E 1 in December. And with that, that completes EVA-2. The crew will then head into the airlock after the uh, close-up of the old CMG. Uh, this is a picture of the uh, CMG as it comes up on ESP-3 carrier in the Endeavour's payload bay. Uh, there's three MLI straps and a large cover that goes over the CMG itself, uh, which you see in the right picture in black. Uh, the crew will work with this cover folded down enough to be able to grab onto the handrails on the CMG so Dave can hang on to it and carry it uh, across over to station. Um, with that, I'd like to go ahead and start the video for EVA-3, and we'll talk through that one. For EVA-3, Rick and Expedition 15 crew member Clay Anderson will be exiting the airlock. During this EVA, they will begin working separate tasks. We'll start with Rick's relocation of the P-6 S-band antenna. He starts by placing a foot restraint on the station arm and then climbing into it. The arm will be taking Rick to the top of the P-6 structure to the S-band antenna, which is highlighted. This is one of the tasks that required the earlier retraction of the forward radiator due to the limited space with the orbiter. Once at the antenna, Rick will disconnect three electrical connectors tighten the high gain antenna gimbal bolts to prevent it from moving and then unbolt the antenna from the truss. From there the arm will carry Rick with the antenna in hand to the port side of ISS above the P1 truss. Rick will bolt the antenna to the P1 truss, connect the electrical connectors and data connectors and release the gimbal bolts of the high gain antenna. The antenna is now at its permanent home. Now while Rick is working on the antenna relocation, Clay will exit the airlock and head towards the seated carts on the forward face of the truss. He will then release the seated carts from the mobile transporter, or MT, and then translate them over to the port location for, of his first work site. He will reconfigure a foot restraint on the seated cart as his work platform. His task is to install two boxes, the BSP and transponder as we call them, on the P1 truss, which are the electronics for controlling the antenna that Rick is installing. When Clay is complete with the box install, he will then move the seated carts into a position that will allow them to be decoupled and retrieved by the station arm. At this point, Rick and Clay will swap places on the arm, and Clay will be placed in front of seated cart number one. Rick will release the seated cart wheels from the truss rails, and Clay will grab it to be relocated. The arm will swing Clay over to the starboard side of ISS and Rick will join him to reattach the CETA cart wheels to the truss rails. Rick will then move the CETA cart and recouple it to the MT. The arm will take Clay back to the port side and they will repeat the process for the second CETA cart as well. Both CETA carts will be recoupled to the starboard side of the MT. With both seated carts on this side, it will allow the MT to move to its furthest point port on the truss for the relocation of the P6 truss on the next flight. After the seated cart move, Rick and Clay split up again and will follow Rick first. Rick will translate to the Z1 truss. There he will retorque the high gain antenna gimbal bolts on the failed antenna, which is, will be returned on the next flight as well. After that, Rick will then move to the airlock to take photos and remove two Missy materials experiments which were placed outside back in August of 2006. Rick will close the two Missies much like a suitcase and then place them inside the airlock for return on STS-118. Now while Rick is working on the gimbal bolts and the Missy retrieval, Clay will translate to the P6 truss to remove the transponder electronics box from the antenna we just relocated to P1. 
Clay will bring the box back inside to be returned. That completes CVA 3. The crew at that point would head back into the airlock. And I'd like to go ahead and start the, uh, or actually I have one photograph here just to show you. I've mentioned gimbal bolts a few times during the, the last two EVAs. Uh, this is a picture of the SASA gimbal bolts that the crew will be working on. Uh, these, there's four bolts on the high gain antenna and basically these bolts uh, allow uh, to, to lock the antenna in a certain position. The bolts that you see there on the left, uh, once they are swung over to the right side, latch onto the base of the antenna and then you tighten the bolts down to hold the antenna in place while we move it around. Uh, prevents damage to the antenna. So uh, these are the SASA gimbal bolts. Uh, the one task that we have um, on this EVA is to go and retighten some gimbal bolts that were attempted on a uh, previous shuttle flight. With that, I'd like to go ahead and start EVA 4 and talk through that for you. For our last EVA, EVA 4, Dave and Clay will be exiting the airlock and going out to the S-1 truss to install the orbiter inspection boom support hardware. They will carry the large supports out to the work site from the airlock. The two supports will be attached on the trunnion pins of the S-1 truss. This will allow the orbiter inspection boom to be stowed on ISS on the 1JA flight. Dave will then go to the S-0 truss to remove a failed GPS antenna. This antenna will be returned as well for refurbishment on SCS-118. Clay will then go to the P6 truss to relocate an auxiliary bag which contains some contingency hardware. The bag will be moved to the Z1 truss directly below its current location so that it will remain centrally located when the P6 truss is moved outboard. Dave and Clay will then join up again at the forward end of the lab. There, they will work to install the external wireless instrumentation system, or EWIS, antennas on, the labs, on two of the lab's handrails. For this task, they will be lifting a lab MMOD shield to complete an electrical connection. After the EWIS is installed, they will move around the lab end cone to the lab C2-02 MMOD shield. This shield cannot be reattached properly by the SDS-117 crew. We will try to reattach the shield if possible or use wire ties to secure the shield for a longer duration than the current temporary tethers which are holding the shield. A second shield is located on the node end cone, which we will try to reattach as well. This shield poses more difficult more difficulty due to the confined area between the lab and the node and some design differences between the struct uh, differences between uh, the lab and the node. Again, wire ties may be used to per permanently tie down the shield. As time permits, the last task on EVA4 will be for Dave and Clay to return to the airlock and retrieve the wireless video system called WETA. The WETA will be installed on the aft side of the S3 truss. The WETA is part of a system that delivers the great EVA helmet camera views from the EV crew. After the WETA is installed, Dave and Clay will head back inside. And this completes EVA 4. This is a picture of the lab end, uh, end cone shield that we'll be working with. Uh, to just show you essentially what the current configuration of it is, uh, we have some adjustable tethers strapped to a tool and across the shield, the base.